my God, oh my God, oh my God. Stress. I mean, oh yeah. And there was just so much to do. Leon was always He was like, pow, pow, pow. Stanley never trusted anybody. He just did. Everything had to be to the millimeter. It is your responsibility to make sure they understand exactly what you want. Invent timing sheet, trailer, translation, lab work, color time, layout. I don't know how to do layouts. Sure you do. These are from Eyes Wide Shut. I'm playing eight different people. When somebody would say to Stanley, I'd give my right arm to work for you, he would kind of smile because I actually think he thought, well, why are you lowballing me? What, just the right arm? I wanted, I wanted to be with Stanley, work with Stanley, do all that stuff. I just wanted to. Hey, everybody, welcome to What the Flick. I'm Matt, that's Ben, that's Christy. Uh, they're going to talk about a movie called Film Worker, which uh, I didn't have a chance to see because I had things to do. It's really good, though, and it's short. Okay. Ben's favorite thing, it's short. Yeah, it's short. Um, uh, it's the story that of... That uh, wrong. Of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, you have no idea. Uh, it's the story of uh, Leon Vitale, uh, and he is, in fact, a film worker. Specifically, uh, for nearly 25 years, he worked for Stanley Kubrick and did everything for Stanley Kubrick. He's described as his personal assistant, but that significantly diminishes uh, what he does because he's not a personal assistant, not to diminish personal assistants, but in the way that we think of him. Uh, but what's interesting about his story is that uh, this enormously talented guy who uh, was in Barry Lyndon, he is he kills Barry Lyndon in Barry Lyndon, plays Lord Spoiler Bullington. Spoiler alert. Yeah, totally. Uh, he, uh, and was en route unquestionably to a either moderately successful or highly successful yeah. career as an actor, both in film and on stage, and essentially gave it up to learn the film business and work for Stanley Kubrick doing a little of everything. And if there is one flaw with this movie, uh, it is that we don't get a real answer as to why this guy was willing to walk away, very handsome guy, uh, walk away from a, and talented, walk away from a successful career as a star, as an, a person in front of the camera and on the stage, to sort of devote his life to doing everything for Kubrick, from Foley casting to remastering all of, of Kubrick's classics. That said, he is a storyteller and a compelling character, yeah. and you learn a ton. If you don't learn quite as much about Vitaly as you want, uh, there's a lot of insights into Kubrick. Yeah, I think even if you know Kubrick and you know his no notorious demanding persona, you know. Sticklerishness. He, he was meticulous and obsessive and, you know, the whole thing with making Tom Cruise walk through a doorway 99 times, like that's all true. And maybe, so maybe none of that is new, but yeah, some of the details, some of the anecdotes are really fascinating as far as how, like, the, the reason that there are twins in The Shining is because right. of Leon Vitale, you That's know? Right. There are ways, like, and he incalculable and, and he ways. And he found Danny, too. He found Danny Lloyd, and, and he became his, like, de facto acting coach on set. There are a million ways in which Kubrick's films are the way they were because of Leon Vitale behind the scenes. And he's, and, yeah. and he's never he's never bragging about it. I mean, oh, they, no. literally, you have to, like, draw it out of him. Like, everyone who worked there is like, no, no, Leon. Leon did this. Leon did this. Yeah, and to the detriment not only of his own career, nope. you know, he, yeah. he would have been a steadily working actor for sure, but also his own family. Like yeah. he, he's got kids. He's got grown kids now who call him Leon. Leon. They yeah. don't call him Dad. And well, let's not knock that. I have, no, but, I have a daughter who calls me Ben. No, no, but there's <laughs> yeah, no. But there's yeah, yeah. She calls you anything at all, pal. <laughs> no, no, no. But there's clearly totally, like there's right, resentment and there's estrangement and. You know, you see footage of his kids running around Kubrick's office, like playing in piles of scripts and boxes and things. And yeah, why does he do it? I guess to be close to greatness. And he he was fascinated early on by the filmmaking process and he wanted to be a part of it. And he got to be a part of it, you know, with one of the masters. And you have a lot of actors who worked in his films, like Ryan O'Neill, like Matthew Modine, talking about Leon's massive presence in everything and also being baffled like we are as to why would you give yeah. it all up? Leon, you know? uh, Modine is, uh, Ryan O'Neill's good too, but Modine I thought particularly insightful. There's a great chunk, by the way, on on Full Metal Jacket yeah. uh, because he uh, he didn't quite cast Arlie Ermey, but he played a critical role in getting uh -huh. Ermey cast. And then he was Ermey's acting coach uh -huh. throughout, pushing and pushing and pushing Ermey. And he embraced the sort of, the demand for excellence that, that Kubrick had, Vitaly then mm -hmm. had, although not as, 
you know, not as uh, threatening, I suspect. I was like, cruelly, but, he was still a kind man, yes. But Modine has some moments where he's like, I want, he writes in his Full Metal Jacket diary, you know, I wanted so badly to, to help Leon, mm -hmm. but I had no idea how one would go about yeah. helping Leon. Right, and, and Leon's story does not end when Kubrick dies in 99. No, right. Like, you see that there was a big exhibit at LACMA here in LA a couple of years ago. A, one, re yeah. a thrilling, fascinating, like, detailed thing with, like, Kubrick's notes on the side of the script and, you know, the typewriter and the twins' dresses. And Leon was not invited to take part in any of it. Cur colossal mistake. Totally overlooked. The single bizarre. most important person, the person who right. could lend the most right. insight and curation to this yeah. was, not, was not included. But he then, if you watch the movie, which you should, like, he then you know, was big about it and went back to 35, the exhibit. With, 35 times, yeah. he just took people on his own. With various wow. yeah, friends yeah. and friends of friends and like, Anybody, it was like a personal film school for people. Here's how you had amazing. to get him to do it. You had to ask and then he would do it. It's amazing, yeah. yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a fascinating film. If you love how movies are made, you will love it. I give it a nine. Yeah, I gave it a nine. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a tragedy. It, it's compelling and you, you sort of want a little more about Leon, mm -hmm. but I get, if he doesn't give it, he doesn't give it. That said, I mean, I can't wait to try to figure out a way to have lunch with, uh, with yeah. Leon Vitale. He's out here. So. Yeah, so our number's nine. It's at 95% on the tomato meter. I'm guessing it's just New York and L.A. It was, it was in L.A. last weekend, so it's right. out there for you to find. You said it. If you love movies and love how they're made, go, go see Filmmaker. Thanks. Filmworker. Bye.